Greetings, brothers and sisters. Well, Don Lemons is in trouble with Jussie Smollett trial now all of a sudden. Um, we'll get to that because that's sort of the main point, but just start here. Chris Cuomo's forced out of Sirius XM after sexual misconduct claims CNN firing sources say. And so I didn't even know he was on Sirius XM, but he is being, you know, kind of canceled. And what's interesting about this is all these guys pushed back against, you know, stuff that happens on social media from people, right, who are individuals. And now that's all he can be, right? He doesn't have any, <laughs> no one's going to hire him to, to voice his opinion. So he could go and be an individual on social media. He's got some re name recognition. He could make a, you know, living doing a podcast or something. And that's what he's relegated to, right? Now he's in competition with these beastly uh, authoritative uh, news conglomerates, right? Except he's not interesting. He's not really, you know, whatever. But he's got some sort of, you know, fan base, I assume. And he could monetize that. But that's what he's left, you know. No, but that's what he's left to do, right? No longer uh, a part of the beast. There was no hoax. Justice Smollett denies attack was staged during testimony. But this is the big story. Lemonade. CNN host blasted for failing to mention his own key role in helping Jussie Smollett. And so here's another example of somebody who's friends with somebody who's in trouble. And he gave him advice. He taught, he tipped him off that the police were investigating him right? <laughs> and didn't mention it on CNN. And now Jussie has sold him out when he's testified and saying Don Lemon did all these things. Don Lemon's. The hypocrisy is off the charts, and it is sickening. And so right after Chris Cuomo gets accused of withholding information and acting inappropriately and using his influence as a journalist to, to help criminal activity, now Don Lemons has done the same thing. Here he is talking about it. Jussie Smollett, the actor who is accused of lying to police about an alleged hate crime in 2019, testifying in his own defense today. At the time, Smollett told police that two men had attacked him in the street, yelling racist, anti-gay remarks, put a noose around his neck, and poured bleach on him. And so what happened was he had, you know, if you don't remember the story, Jesse Smollett went out to Subway, you know, Subway restaurant, you know, if you want to call it that, at like 4 in the morning, really late, and it was freezing. It was like Chicago's a cold-ass place. And he went out, you know, the middle of the winter. Nobody was there. But he, in front of some sort of security camera, they showed that he was, you know, attacked by some guy. Maybe two guys, I don't remember. And, you know, there was a noose put around his neck and, you know, the bleach stuff. And then he went home and called the police. And he was, like, eating his Subway sandwich. The police came in. He's, like, eating his Subway sandwich. And he still has the noose on and the bleach. And then there was a check to these two guys he used to work with. I think they were extras on the set of um, Empire, the show he was on. And they had trained him to do, uh, you know, they were like bodybuilders, the, what I call the Akuma Matata brothers. They were from Nigeria or something like that, right? And they had trained him. They were his, like, personal trainers. And he gave him a big check to go and pretend to beat him up because he wanted to create, you know, a fake hate, hate crime, right? <laughs> you know, so this was, you know, it came out and it was, you know, the story didn't hold up and he was mocked by Dave Chappelle in one of his specials and like everyone kind of knew he was lying. And the people of Chicago, the police department and the mayor were pissed, the, the police chief particularly. And he kind of got away with it, but they were like, no, no. And so they charged him. And these guys have testified that he paid them to stage and hoax this thing. And Don Lemons is now completely intertwined with this, right? And it's bad because in terms of real, you know, situations like this, it demeans it. The guy's looking for attention. I mean, it's all these things. It's bad on lots of levels. 
So Don Lemons found out his friend was being investigated. And at that point, Don Lemons must have known that it was a hoax, right? So he knows his friend has committed some sort of fraudulent crime because most people knew. And when the investigation took place, you know, the story started to fall apart in the media. And so for Don Lemons to insert himself in this story, use his credentials as a, you know, an anchor on CNN and inside information to warn off his friend about investigation, right? Like it's important to know, you know, and he made decisions based on Don Lemon to withhold information based on Don Lemon's telling him about it is really bad, right? Because it's just, um, there's no journalistic integrity here. A crime has been committed and you are thwarting the investigation. You are hurting the police's ability to prove he committed this crime. And then you're not telling anybody about it, right? It's, you know, it's pretty bad. Like, <laughs> you know, it's not good for CNN. And so for Don Lemons to be involved in a Chris Cuomo-esque like situation right after they fire Chris Cuomo, I mean, CNN is taking it on to M and F and Chin, right? CNN is like, you know, their whole brand and everything and their whole fakeness. And, you know, their big claim is that they're journalists and people on social media are just random people who are reporting disinformation. And these guys are caught hold, withholding information, involving themselves in stories in a way that's inappropriate, right? <laughs> It's just bad for them, and it's like, you know, it's all coming out. Don Lemon is under fire for failing to mention his own involvement in the Jesse Smollett trial during Monday night CNN broadcast. Smollett had told the court that he first knew that police doubted his race hate attack was real after getting a text from Lemons. And so um, <laughs> this is, you know, Don Lemons is texting him saying that the police are getting involved saying that that was key in his decision not to hand his phone records over to the cops because Don Lemons bailed him out. Lemon ended his Monday night show with a report on the latest news from the ex-Empire star, tri, Star's trial with no mention of his own involvement. Seemingly a far cry from earlier instances when the anchor had called someone in this case personal due to their close relationship. And then people on Twitter are, you know, hammering them. Because, you know, the obvious connection with um, Chris and Andrew Cuomo. The hypocrisy is off the charts, and it is sickening. So Huffington Post regularly covers um, Jimmy Kimmel's obsession with Trump. Kimmel flips one of Trump's most offensive moments back on him. <laughs> Way to go, Kimmels. You're still got it, right? <laughs> Why are you still, you know, why is still Kimmel's have a show? Like, is anybody watching Kimmel's show? I want to be fully, fully transparent, and I know it's not easy to hear. So this is um, Jimmy Kimmel Live, and somehow this is where it starts with the end of The Bachelor for some reason. And I clicked on it. I didn't really want to watch it at first, but it's hilarious. But I was intimate with both of you. What? He was intimate with both of them? What happened? <laughs> Done. <laughs> I've never felt me like that. They're crying. They're tears somehow on Jimmy Kimmel's. Before. <laughs> what the actual <laughs> Yeah, what the actual F is going on here? He was intimate with both of us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cry your eyes out. He's in love with all three of us. <laughs> He's in love with all three of us. How can that be? It's a <laughs> It is wonderful. I'm so broken. He's so broken inside. He don't know what to do. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kim alive. It's Jimmy Kim alive. He's broken. He's just broken. Anyways, let's get to the Trump thing here. He takes a shot at Aaron Rodgers, I think, first. You know, they did a study at 
Colorado State University, they found that the people who spread COVID the most are men. Specifically this uh, man. Uh, <laughs> never forget, by the way. You still got it, Kimmels. You still have the jokes, right? This man's a COVID spreader. And so then Jimmy Kimmel goes in on Trump. And he has got a five-minute segment at least here. And his Trump obsession is just embarrassing. Trump's latest business venture is off to a very Trumpy start. He, the social media platform he's been working on, which is ironically titled Truth Social, missed their deadline for a partial launch. They were supposed to go online last month. And even though... Like, Trump should have done this years ago. I said this. While he was president, like, it would have saved whatever, you know. I mean, Trump got rolled on social media and, the, you know, media... And he had the money to do this, right? And it's going to be successful because there'll be a social media platform that's for, you know, right-wing people who can't express themselves on Twitter and these other places, right? And, you know, those other places will suffer drastically from the loss of revenue. It, you know, it could be a game changer, but it's kind of late, right? Anyways. So they're behind schedule. Trump claims his platform has raised a billion dollars in funding, which must be true. He's always been a straight shooter when it comes to finances. <laughs> but Trump claims these aren't real jokes, right? You know, they're, you know, like little things like a, a husband and wife would say back to and forth to each other, right? Like little, you know, little digs. You know, like they're not real jokes. They're not professional comedian jokes. They're like two people who hate each other sniping at each other right and you know and he's sniping at trump with these little you know what did trump do to you like why you hate him so much why are you so bitter right <laughs> like you know what did he tweet at you a couple times i mean what exactly did trump do to you for you to be this obsessed with him he got a billion dollar commitment from a diverse group of institutional investors he didn't disclose who those institutional investors are all we know for sure is that those investors are about to lose a billion dollars <laughs> trump you know he stopped and paused like waiting for laughs and it's not funny right better get this site up soon because over the weekend he sent this doozy of an email that said anybody that doesn't think there wasn't massive election fraud in the election is either very stupid or very corrupt i couldn't agree more maybe he's finally coming around Stupid and corrupt, also his nicknames for Eric and Don Jr. Did you know that? For him to criticize Trump's dopey sons. Trump's sons, I don't like either one of them. Especially Don Jr. He's weird. I didn't like him when he was on Celebrity Apprentice. And yet, you have Joe Biden's son, Hunter, on his show, where he just sort of gets on his knees and services the guy, who comes out with a book about being a crackhead. And, you know, there's no evidence that he's still not a crackhead. And Jimmy, Fall Jimmy Kimmel's just um, was completely like, uh, so bad, right? Kissing Hunter Biden's, you know, just um, completely, you know, not being a comedian. Because Hunter Biden, in every possible way, is worse than Trump's kids, right? Now, Trump's kids are dopes. So I don't like them. It's not like they're great. But measuring them against Hunter Biden who was a crackhead who held positions because of his dad's influence in the Ukraine and had business deals with China while be, whilst being a crackhead, which he admitted to, that he was a crackhead for so many years. He was in and out of rehab eight different times and was engaged in all these seedy behaviors that he admitted to in the book. And Jimmy Kimmel has just given him a free pass on that. Plus, as a comedian, there's so much material here. Hunter Biden is hilarious. This, the fact that the president has a crackhead son and neither of the Trump boys, neither of the Trump dopes, <laughs> impregnated a stripper while their dad was running for president, had a stripper, illegitimate stripper baby while he was on crack. The stripper was named Dallas but came from Arkansas, which is hilarious, right? And they just left this alone. No professional comedian would ever leave alone the fact that the president has a crackhead son, but he did. The hypocrisy is off the charts here, right? <laughs> the hypocrisy is off the charts, and it is sickening. It's so bad. 
Anyway, Donald Trump's new business venture is a book, a picture book of his four years in office. All proceeds from the book go to him. And he was on Fox News again yesterday being moistly licked by Mark Levin, who asked Trump to... The way that you licked Hunter, her, Hunter Biden, right? Like, just be real here, Jim. You don't have any, like, you know, you're not a, a, you're not talking truth to power. You're an embarrassment as a comedian. You're not funny. Like, you shouldn't have a show. You were offensive in the past, you know, to liberals with your man show, which was highly offensive, offensive and racist and misogynistic. You should have been canceled for that, right? He's some sort of gatekeeper here. And he's so obsessed with Trump, it's embarrassing. Like, it's, you know concerning psychologically to give us some insight into his relationship with melania tell us about the relationship so she's a very solid person she's uh you're not allowed to say this anymore so i won't say that she's a beautiful person she's very beautiful but today that doesn't matter she's not allowed to talk about I'm that a lot so i won't do yeah. that okay <laughs> i will not talk about beauty but she is she's a beautiful person inside and out. Why wouldn't he talk about her? Let's listen to the joke here. Most importantly, out. You know, when I met her, I immediately called Jeffrey Epstein and said, cancel my flight, I found the one. Wait, you're really going there with all your pals, all your Epstein pals? <laughs> this is brutal. Like, he's, you know, just how bad they've become and how hypocritical they are. Like, he's just a complete... Um, you know, like a like a cartoon or Saturday Night Live bad characterization of himself, right? And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I, Woo! I um, I promised that if I had to show a clip of Trump flapping his lips again, I'd try to also make sure he was naked. So here you go. You want to see Trump naked? Is that what you're saying? I could have made deals with everybody. I could have made deals in in. You think this is making fun of Trump. You're making fun of yourself, right? You've talked about Trump's Johnson with um, the porn ex-porn star uh, Stormy Daniels, right? You know, you've talked about Trump in um, all kinds of, you know, weird ways. And you want to picture him naked? It's been like almost a year since the election. And everyone else has kind of moved on from Trump. You were obsessed with Trump for four years for some unknown reason you based your um show on trump for the past five years and you want to picture him naked like how is this about trump you've put a you know you've taken somebody else's body and you superimposed treads trump's head on it like you're obsessed with him <laughs> and you think this is about him like you're degrading him you're embarrassing yourself right saudi arabia i could have made deals with everybody they all wanted me to make deals. I said, don't do it. Don't make deals. I knew that doing this would be very expensive because I didn't want to do Oh, my God. You're like, you know, there's something wrong with you, bro. You're <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel. It's like this is your inner world, your inner fantasies, right? This is how you want to see Trump. Like, <laughs> Maybe you should seek some therapy. So let's move on to LeBron's. Of getting to it and the three long distance the shot clock was becoming an issue so lebron hit a three-point shot at the end of a basketball game and he did the big ball dance and lebron celebrating the triple celebrating the triple with the big ball dance which kareem abdul jabbar was not a fan of a former laker and you know i think he's the number one he scored more points than any other basketball player in the history of basketball. Then last week, LeBron was fined $15,000 for doing a big ball stance after the Lakers win over the Pistons. The NBA has been fining players between $15,000 and $25,000 for doing this dance since the 2010-2011 season. For me <laughs> Kareem has a podcast or something. Me, winning is enough. Why do you need to do a stupid childish dance and disrespect the other team on the court? It doesn't make sense. Goats don't dance. Exactly. Goats don't dance. No wiser words were ever said. Kareem's not a fan of LeBron James's antics.
You know, things are really starting to unravel here. (laughs) I mean, CNN has become a complete joke. And, you know, in terms of this exposure to normal people, to average people, not just truthers, not just people who are anti-mainstream media, but people who watch it, you know, and they may or may not be conscious of it, but it's right there, right? And this obsession with Trump that they've all had and this stuff with Jimmy Kimmel's, you know, it's not healthy. (laughs) Like what they're doing here is just not healthy. Their um, behaviors, their attitudes, their, their obsessions, their, you know, what they're focused on, their goals in life. And it's just there for everyone to see, right? Like it's more and more transparent and it's just going to get like this. It's going to continue in this way. And they're not like afraid of the hypocrisy or the afraid of the, the lies. They're not trying to even look good anymore. I mean, maybe they're just trying to appeal to the dumbed down, the most low conscious, low vibration audience, which is whatever that is, right? But it just shows you the society's crumbling. And, you know, it's fun to watch until there's no food in the, <laughs> on the shelves. There's no gas, you know, when the society really breaks down and, you know, then everybody, that gets reels for everyone. Because now this stuff's important when your basic needs aren't, aren't getting met. Right now, you know, there's some shortages and some prices have spiked and there's some, you know, showing there's some, um, you know, some of the ramifications from inflation and the economy collapsing. But it hasn't got nearly as bad as it's going to get. And when that happens, there's a totally different, you know, level of this stuff then it's going to get reels for people. And when that happens, it's going to be, you know, a transformative in one way or another. People are either going to, you know, it's going to be a shock to their system and they're going to connect to God or something. They'll, you know, realize they got to change and, you know, embrace something higher or they'll just go complete like, you know, low vibrational freaking out, right? And, you know, we'll see. There's going to be a choice point coming up and divinity's there, right? A a chance to evolve and become something more than you are now in this current system. Something deeper, something, you know, connected to your soul, your soul's path and the part of you that's divinity and to rise up to a higher level. The options there, you know, the heartfulness meditation I talk about, there's a system out there to help facilitate this process there's an opportunity, but will people take it, right? Because right now you don't need to choose. Right now you can just rely on the beastly system and, you know, you can have whatever attitude that you have, you know, but it just doesn't matter. I mean, right now, you know, it's just what you believe inside and whatever your take on what's going on, but it really isn't affecting the world and it isn't really affecting you. Your lifestyle is the same same as it was mostly, it was a couple of years ago, but when there's drastic changes to things people need and, you know, they realize that the system has collapsed and they lose faith in the system, the beast and all those things, then you're going to have to, then there's going to be a choice point. And right now it doesn't look like most people are going to choose wisely, right? <laughs> are going to choose the higher, but we'll have to see. There's always hope. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paramano, definitely important for the apocalypse and the ascension. And we'll have a blessed day and be grateful.